Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. Today in this video, I'm gonna go over all the things that you need to consider when going from an OEM wheel and tire to an aftermarket wheel and tire. Now there's a lot of things to consider, and if you don't do this properly, your speedometer, your ABS, and your traction control can all be affected negatively because of this. So I'm gonna get into it right now, and I'm gonna show you what you need to know. So right here, I have Mini Cooper, and this is the OEM wheel and tire size that comes with the car. Now when you're going to an aftermarket wheel and tire, it's very important that you keep the same overall circumference of this wheel onto your next wheel. So that if this wheel, if this wheel right here is say a certain size, if the next one that you put on the car, your aftermarket wheel and tire, if it's a different size, say if it's smaller or bigger, your speedometer, your ABS and everything is going to be off only because you're essentially changing the last gear of the car. So you have gears that go from your engine to the transmission. Uh, to the differential and to your wheels. And this is essentially the last gear that goes to the ground. So this right here is very important in keeping that same overall circumference or very close to. Now when you're changing your wheels and tires, if anything, you wanna make sure that the overall circumference is within 3%. So if this is say 100 centimeters, at most you'd wanna do, um, you wanna to go to a 97 centimeter tire or 103 centimeter. Now of course those measurements are off, but just for the sake of understanding this, um, I just went with that number. However, with that being said, it doesn't matter if you have a 15 inch wheel or if you go to a 16, 17, or 18. What you're gonna be changing then at that point is gonna be how much tire you have here. So if you have a 15 inch wheel like this, if you were to say go to a 16 or 17, what you'd be changing at that point to maintain the same overall circumference is the side profile of the tire. So you'd be getting, instead of a fat tire like this, you'd be getting a smaller one every single time that you say upgrade or make this wheel larger. Now I'm gonna get into the overall tire size afterwards, but before you consider the tire profile you need, you have to consider what size wheel you wanna go with. So when deciding what size wheel you wanna go with, it all depends on what look you're going for. So my OEM wheels that I had on my car were one size smaller than these. So they were a set of 17 by sevens. Now these wheels that I have right here, these RPF ones are 18 by eights. So these are a little bit bigger, which means that you know I could run a little bit wider of a tire and not have a problem while also having a low profile tire. Now my other set of wheels that I have right here are a set of TSW Mirabos, and these are 19 by eights. So they're the same width as these NKs right here, but because it's a bigger rim, it looks a little bit different. This is more of say a street wheel and tire setup, and this is more of a track wheel and tire setup. Now for my car, I could go for a 17 inch stock wheel size, I could go to an 18, I could go to a 19, or I could even go to a 20 if I wanted to. But the difference between each one of those four wheel setups is the size of tire that you're getting with it. So a 17 inch tire, so smaller than this, would have a fatter tire than the 18, and this 18 has a fatter tire than the 19, and the same thing will go for the 20. For the 20 inch tire, I'd probably be running rubber bands for tires. But it all depends on what kind of setup you're looking for. So if you wanna go with something more softer and you know maybe trackable, you wanna go with a wheel that's a little bit bigger than stock, if not just one inch bigger, and that's what I went with right here. These are a set of 18s, and these are perfect because they're not only lightweight, because I have a decently sized tire, like it's a low profile, but it's not too low profile, I'll be able to go and track this and not have to worry about cracking the rim because the tire isn't able to take up some of those hits. If you go to a larger wheel, say something like this, because you have less tire, you have less cushion, I guess, before the rim. So the rim is gonna take more of an impact um, for a 19 inch rim like this, as opposed to my 18. So it all depends on what you're going for. So once you have your wheel size picked out, you need to make sure that you get a good sized tire that's gonna fit on here and it's not gonna have stretch. Now a lot of guys have commented, hey, how do you stretch your tires? How do you do that? For the love of God, please do not stretch your tires. And the reason being is that when you have your tire and it sits on the bead right here, when you have a regular tire on here, you're gonna have overhang and it's gonna be secured up on the rim properly. If you hit a bump, you know, if you do anything, the tire isn't gonna snap off and fall off the wheel. When you run a stretch tire, you're not gonna be getting a good amount of like pressure on both sides of the bead, which means that if you hit a hard bump or you do anything, you have the potential of your tire to come off. So make sure that whatever you do, do not stretch it. 
So for instance, this right here is an eight inch wide wheel. And the tire that I put on here uh, is a 225-40 R19. So the tire at that point is gonna have overhang on both sides. So if I wanted to, I could get the wheel, lean it down, and I'm not gonna have to worry about getting the faces scratched up. Now, with that being said, you can also put an even wider tire on here. And at that point, the tire is gonna have a little bit of meat hanging over the sides, and it's gonna look like a very aggressive, mean tire. So if you look at the profile of it, with say a 245 mounted, it's gonna be nice and straight over the top, and then a hard cut down. It's gonna look very aggressive. So if you were going with a tire setup, like my 18s, like for my track ones that I have, you're gonna to wanna to go with something a little bit wider for the wheel than thinner. Now the tires that I wanna run on my RPF ones are 245, 40 R18s. And the 245s that I'll have on the RPF ones and the 225s that I have mounted on my TSWs, they're basically pretty damn close to the same overall uh, tire size, which means that I'm not gonna have any problems with my speedometer, ABS, or traction control because of the different sized final tire. You wanna have it so it's within 3% of the OEM wheel. So I just switched to my computer and I logged on to 1010tires.com's website. Now in here, I entered a couple different tire sizes to see if the tire size that I want for say my new aftermarket wheel is gonna be pretty close to the same size as my OEM wheel. So I punched in the OEM tire size that I have for my Accord, and that is my stock tire size. It's a 225-50 R17, okay? So I have that loaded up, and then I also plugged in some other wheel and tire options to see if they were close. So for the, my first tire that I have, this is a 225-40 R19. So it's gonna give you all the specs right here. So it's gonna give you the section width, it's gonna give you the rim diameter, um, the rim width range. So if you were to put a 225-40 R19, the typical wheels that you would put it on is anywhere between a seven and a half to a nine. Now if you go with a seven and a half inch rim right here, you're gonna have more of a meaty fit. If you go with a nine inch rim, you're gonna have more of a stretched tire fit. Um, now I would stay away from this range if you can. I would go closer to the lower bound. But when you move down, you can see the variation of the tire. Remember when I told you that you wanna be within 3% of the original tire? Well, this is 0.88%. So this will be a good fit for our car. And this is what I have currently mounted on my TSWs. Now, my other wheels that I have on my RPF ones, the Michelins, are these. They're 225 40 R18s, and they're 2.98%. So that's good. And the tires that I wanna get for it after I kill those off are 245 40 R18s and those are a little bit better of a tire, it's gonna be a better fit. Now these are gonna be slightly larger than the Michelins that I currently have, um, but the thing is it's still gonna work and still not gonna give me any problems. So if you want, you can go to 1010 Tires' website, Tool Tech, you can go to Tire Size Calculator, and you can punch in your car, it'll bring up the tire that you have, or if you know the tire size, you can just plug it in right there, and then you can choose four different tire sizes to see if they fit. So when choosing how wide you wanna go for a wheel, you need to be careful and you don't wanna go too wide because if you go too wide and you mount up the wrong size wheel that has an incorrect offset, you're either gonna rub on the inside line of the fender or the wheel is gonna stick out past the outer part of the fender. However, when it's done properly, the fitment is gonna be on point. So as you can see right here, my front and rear wheels are flush with the fender. They don't stick out and they don't look bad by any means. Now when you're looking into new wheels and tires, you wanna consider your suspension too. So if you're running on stock ride height, and say down the road you wanna install coilovers or something like that, when you adjust the ride height, and you either raise or lower your vehicle, you're actually gonna be adjusting how the wheel sits on the car. So because when the suspension goes up and down, what's gonna happen is the wheel is gonna either pull in or out because of the control arms that are attached to it. So when you go over a bump, the control arms are either gonna go up or down. And because of that, if you go too far up, it's actually gonna to wanna to tuck the wheel and bring it in. So if you want to make a perfect wheel setup for your car and you wanna get it to be perfectly flush without running any wheel spacers, my advice to you is to get first your suspension dialed in on point. So get your coilovers or air suspension, have it set to the proper setting that you want. And then at that point, measure from your OEM wheels and see how much more room you have to work with. So if you can play and you know add another inch wheel, that's great. But keep in mind that the offset is also gonna be affected at that point. 
So when you're considering wheels and tires, there's a lot to think about. And I'm actually gonna show you an offset calculator to determine how wide of a wheel you can go with while not making your wheels either stick out too much like past the fender or too far in the fender where they would rub. So on 1010tires.com's website, you can go under here under tools and tech and you can find the wheel offset calculator. Now you can plug in your wheel and tire size. So say it's an eight inch, uh, so say it's an eight inch wide wheel with a 35 offset and your new wheel is say uh, a nine with a 40 offset. You press calculate and it'll show you how much more room on the inside you have or how much room on the outside you have. So if I were to say switch from this sized wheel to this one, I would have 18 millimeters less clearance on the inside and the outer end would extend an extra eight millimeters. So this is how you would choose a proper wheel and tire setup so that you can get it to be perfectly flush without rubbing. Offset is everything, so make sure that you get this down pat. So while that we're already talking about offsets, it's very important that you get a wheel with a proper offset so that the brake caliper doesn't interfere with your rim. So um, in my last video where it was a complete guide for wheels, I talked about the basic elements and calculations for wheels. So when we're talking about offset, you want something that's big enough so it's large enough that it'll clear the caliper, but not too big, you know, so it's just overkill and you have a ton of gap. So this wheel setup is an eight plus 35 offset. Now, if your wheel and tire setup that you have can't clear this brake caliper, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to add a wheel spacer on the back of it to push the wheel out so that you can fit your wheel and tire. Now at that point, essentially what you're doing is you're adding offset without changing the size of the wheel. So if I have an eight inch rim, like this right here, an eight plus 35, if you add a 25 millimeter offset, the plus 35 offset is gonna add whatever size wheel spacer that is. So instead of being a eight plus 35, it's gonna be an eight plus 60 if you're adding a 25 millimeter wheel spacer. So I mean, those are just some things to consider when you're talking about brakes and everything, but if you can, try and get your suspension, brakes, and all that stuff dialed in first before you get a proper set of wheels and tires. That way, you can make sure that you get it perfectly dialed in, you're gonna have the clearance you want, you're gonna have the fitment you want on the inside and on the outside, and also so it's perfectly flush with the fender. The next measurement that we're gonna look at next is called the bore, and that's the size, the inside diameter in here. So what we're measuring is from this side to here, how big this is. So if I could, I'd grab my micrometer and stick it in here and measure this size. Now this is 76 millimeters, now you have to make sure that the bore, the pilot bore on the car is the same size or smaller than this. Now if this is bigger, so if the pilot seat that we're looking at on the car, so that this mounts to is smaller than this, we're gonna have to put on a hub centric ring like that, just so that when we mount the wheel on the car, it's gonna be aligned properly. So when we look at the diameter of the pilot bore, we're gonna be measuring this right here. So I'm just gonna grab my micrometer, attach it on both ends, and see what size this is. Now, oh, I just turned it off, but it's a 64 millimeter pilot. So what you're gonna need is a 64 to 76 hub centric ring if you wanna make sure that this mounts up and attaches properly. So you just snug it on here, and if you want, you can tap it with a hammer, just so that it's properly mounted. And you can pick these up for relatively cheap. Like I'm pretty sure I picked up all four of these for $18. You can get plastic ones or aluminum ones, they're both gonna do the exact same job. And with it like this, our aftermarket wheel is gonna mount up to here and it's not gonna have any vibrations or wobble when we go and drive down the road. So next up, let's talk about the lug nuts. Now, depending on what kind of wheel you go with, you're gonna have a different style lug nut that you're gonna need so you can properly mount the wheel onto the car. Now, for my vehicle, I have a Honda and the OEM lug nut style is called a ball seat. And that is, well, when the taper right here is round, where it's conical. Now, most aftermarket wheels, they have a tapered or acorn lug nut. Now, that's this right here, and it's tapered to a 60 degree angle from here. If you run the wrong kind of lug nut on your wheel, you might cause problems, you might break the wheel, or you might even have the chance of not having the wheels or lug nuts torque properly, well, because you use the wrong lug nut. So make sure that when you buy a wheel and tire, make sure that you buy the correct lug nut for your wheels. So my NKs and my TSWs, they both run the acorn or tapered lug nut. 
And those things mount up properly like this. So there's the acorn or tapered, there's the ball seat, and there's another one called a meg seat and washer. So think of it like this. Think of it like a lug nut that comes up here flat, and the way that it puts pressure onto the stud is there's a washer on here and you're just tightening this and pushing it in. So instead of having the pressure sit right here on the taper of the lug nut, it's gonna be pushed downwards on the washer. When you're considering what size wheel to go with, it all depends on if you wanna be able to rotate your tires or not. So what rotating your tires is, is when you use the front wheels and you move them to the back once they wear down to a certain amount. Now the benefit of that is that you're going to be able to extend the life of all of your tires. Now the one disadvantage of that is that you're going to have a little bit less rubber and less traction than if you were to run a staggered setup. So a staggered setup for your car is when the rear wheels are wider than the fronts. Now the fronts right here are an 8 and the rears are a 9.5. And, and because of that you can run a larger tire in the rear than say in the front. Now in the front, right here, I've got a set of 225 section tires, and in the rear, I've got 255 section tires. Now because of that, I'll be able to get more grip and more traction, and I'll also be able to fit a different rim. If you take note, look at the lip on the front wheel and the rear wheel. You can see that the rear one has more of a lip than the front. Now on top of that, because I'm running a larger wheel, you can see that the rear wheel has concavity to it, where the front does not. These are just some things to consider when looking at new wheels and tires. Now when you're considering aftermarket wheels, if you can spot the money for it, I would definitely suggest going with real wheels. Now the thing is that when you go with the cheap aftermarket eBay, Japanese, whatever um, knockoff wheels, they're not going to be built in the same quality and they're not going to have the DOT stamping and approval than say a real wheel would have. Like the NKs that I have currently mounted on my car, they're a set of inexpensive, lightweight, cast wheels. And because of that, because they're certified and everything, they're a great wheel and that's why they're so popular in the aftermarket world. Like the wheels that I have on the car right now, they're fantastic. I have zero complaints with them. And the thing is, if I knew that they were so good, I would have bought those things first before I bought these. But with that being said, these wheels are still great. They look fantastic. If you ask me, they look better than the end case. But I mean, even still, if you have the extra money to put out for a nice set of wheels and tires, definitely do it and you won't regret it. Um, something that I've seen before is that if you go with a cheap set of wheels, if you hit a bump or if you go to the track, those wheels aren't gonna be as strong and you could break the wheel off of the face. So what would happen is the barrel of the wheel will snap clean off the face and then your car is gonna have an accident. So it's just some things to consider. If you can't afford a set of nice wheels and tires, save up until you can. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, throw them down in the comment section below and I'd be happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. If you choose to go with a staggered setup, you can't rotate the wheels on your car. Now in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to rotate your wheels and tires regarding a front wheel drive car, a four wheel drive truck, you know, everything, and you're gonna know how to do it.